up and good morning guys welcome back to another video today was a little rough on waking up the truck is getting warmed up Aaron got the bright idea that he likes to start at 6 if you guys don't know I am NOT a morning person now granted I don't go to bed till about 2 2 30 sometimes 3 depending on how long video editing takes late nights really the only time that like there's nothing going on that needs to be filmed and or like my real life that I can actually edit. Albeit I'm not the earliest riser in the world, I can assure you all the like entrepreneurs out there and the life coaches that are like, gotta get up four hours ahead of everybody else to get four hours more of the day. I get those four hours at the end of the day or more, six, eight, I don't even know. Regardless, uh, we are back on the Rhino Ranch Gate project and on top of that, we got like a, a pretty cool surprise happening today that I'm not even sure what's going on, but I think it's gonna be cool. Now obviously with the scaffolding set up right there at the guard shack, that's where they're starting. So we're gonna get the guard shack topped out. I don't know the exact height. I think we're gonna go one or two courses above the door and we're gonna call that finished height. We're currently uh, a man down because Papa Rhino broke his trowel the other day. So he's just stuck with a margin trowel instead of a block trowel, which is like crippling when it comes to doing this type of work. Probably make me a half all the way. Now, on top of having a bunch of work to do with the ranch today, um, getting the columns and everything built, obviously, uh, we got some cool stuff that's gonna be happening, and it's gonna be coming from the skies here. We've got a helicopter coming out to the ranch. We've got skydivers coming out to the ranch today, and it seems like a very calm, quiet morning, aside from the, uh, the old chop saw running over there, but I think it's about to get very exciting. Oh, Aaron, just got word. Helicopter's in the air. Oh, shit. Are, are you ready? I'm ready. 35 minutes, ETA. Aaron's really dying to do a, a photo shoot with this helicopter. Aaron, what are we gonna do, buddy? I don't know, I'm not gonna get in it, but I am gonna, <laughs> I am gonna take a briefcase and pretend like I'm getting into it. Is that the new Tinder, uh, Tinder pick? <laughs> no, I gave up on the Tinder app. Oh, jeez. So right now above the doorway, Aaron's doing a, a lintel. Aaron, explain, buddy. Um, this is a door lintel. So if you guys ever see like traditional wood framing, Every opening, a door, a window, whatever, you're gonna run a beam across to span that opening and you're carrying the load from up above. So a CMU or concrete block lentils the same way. You notice the blocks, you flip them upside down. We're basically creating a big void there. We're gonna run our rebar through top and bottom. As you can see right there, we've got a rebar in this course. It might be a little too dark. And then we're running our rebar on the top course. So they'll get two bars through that lentil right there. And then once this whole wall gets grouted, that essentially creates like a concrete beam across the top of the doorway. Now I just got word, helicopter's about 15 minutes out. They asked if there's anywhere in particular they should land. And I kind of like screwed the pooch on this one. I thought it'd be funny. I should write an H somewhere, you know, make my helicopter landing area. And, uh, but then I figured, I don't know where like they're comfortable landing. So I figured they'd do a couple circles and figure out where they want to land. But now they're asking me. So let's see if I can find like a traffic cone and be like, yeah, see that little cone that you can see from five feet away, land next to that. Now we're closer to like, five minutes out and I was just informed they want a, some type of flag or streamer to see which way the wind's blowing. This is the best I could do on short notice. I don't have anything super light, so hopefully this is like light enough to fly around. All right, hopefully that works. We got Milwaukee coming in clutch again as my tripod for our flag.
How's it going? It's going, Ryan. Woo! Sorry for the uh, oh, you're win. Good, dude. Great. Yeah, definitely want you involved as much as you want to be in everything. So. I mean, I'm terrified of heights, so I'll probably be like right here. <laughs> uh, dude, this is a great way to get over heights. You said that. Let's <laughs> go, man. Ryan. Ryan. Up, man. We have an extra skydiving rig. I mean, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> if you want a crash course real quick. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's rad. This is one fun. It's got a 450 horsepower Rolls Royce engine in it. It gears it into the gearbox and transfers everything up and then it's got a shaft to the back. Okay. It uh, drives your tail rotor. Three seats in the back. You got a big baggage. This is all baggage back here. What's your uh, weight capacity on this thing? Uh, totally full. Fully laden. We're 4,500 pounds. That's helicopter and everything okay so we can carry about a thousand pounds we're that's, that's pretty three, good three grand empty 3200 something it's a it's a solid ship it's a bell jet ranger okay so this is what the military used back in like they use these for training back in the 60s they still use them for training nice but they came out with this ship in the 60s nice and there's quit making it uh in 2016 or 17 and went to a new one what year is this one this one's actually a 78 but really? these things get redone every like it gets ripped down to the bare metal yeah, every I mean, like God. five or six years for a refit and it yeah. gets all new interior gets new like all this it's time limited these blades are good for five thousand hours those blades are good for twenty thousand hours so everything on this is either time limited okay. or Ooh. date limited yeah, any, gotcha so i've got this six page spreadsheet it's just pops when i enter my hours on it it says this is due this is due gotcha can't ever tell like what year they are because well i mean looking at this thing clearly it's been painted set up right here i had the guy that used to manage west coast customs okay he did it nice uh he had a falling out with the owner of west coast and opened his own shop and he did all this it looks sick this is your fuel this is a fuel okay well you can see how much it holds we look a little low uh we're we're not carrying much we're carrying 50 right now okay because for weight because you're at what 2500 feet here the higher we get the molecules of air fall further apart okay so the more weight if we're coming in heavy or anything right we have to arrest that descent rate with the power and if it's real heavy and you don't have enough power you'll just can smack it right in all right we'll avoid that today calculate it all because you know you got the people so you're trying to figure out how high you can get so right we cut the fuel load back we might have to go grab some fuel at some point now with uh this being like a main hub for the airport what do you guys got to deal with so with that? i gotta call them they'll redirect traffic for us while we're jumping nice that's my rig right yeah, there that's what i'm jumping yeah, with yeah yeah brought it just for you uh i mean hold on let me, uh, i don't know if this dude, these things are heavy yeah about 25 30 pounds jeez yeah see that puts me over the weight limit Oh, all no, all buck good, 60 good. of me, you know, I can't yeah. get an extra 30. Coming real smooth. Real <laughs> yeah, smooth. I'm sure. This is going to be a straight splat on the ground. I'm good. Hey, hey Anna. Today's the 24th of July. Uh, I got to get out of here. Uh, I'm over to the, over to the my parents' house. So I got to leave. Let me hop over to the flight. This is Aaron trying to make... I gotta start that right here. Oh, you gotta restart? Get out of the way. Oh, my bad. I'm gonna get out of your way. Your video shoot you're working on. <laughs> I don't know if these were like prototypes, couldn't be shown, but I have a feeling the company yeah, wants no, everybody so. to see these. Yeah, so these are the new Hasselblad OnePlus 9 Pro cameras. So we've got five of these things, and we're gonna try to get as much footage as possible with a helicopter and with some skydiving rigs with a well trained pilot. And with a vlogger, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Apparently, I got the most important role here, guys. Yeah. Uh, make sure everything goes smoothly today. All right. As long as everyone has a good time, no one gets hurt. Well, we should Google where the closest hospital is. Really, we should. Just, just in case. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> just in case. No, we should know what heading and how far. There you go. <laughs> but yeah. So, like the skydivers, there's three of us. We also have some of these smoke flares. Okay. Which is kind of interesting when you roll into your hotel at the resort in Palm Springs in Valet. Oh wait, I don't have, it's not this box. The other box had explosives written all over it. Oh nice. It. I was like, yeah, we don't look at that one. Right <laughs> yeah, we have some Senna's, some comms over here that we can actually put in our skydiving helmet. And this way the skydivers can communicate with the pilot and someone on the ground. These are little ankle brackets so we can put the smoke flares on them. But yeah, we're gonna mount them to the chest, mount them to the helmets, mount one inside the helicopter. The helicopter has a bunch of little knobs all around it that we can connect GoPros and nice. one plus nines to. We'll, we'll get creative. There you go. So we'll get the best shot. We got Yetis full of energy drinks. We got some food on the way, so. It's ready to party. All systems go. I don't wanna be the one. <laughs> You guys are nuts. 
Not my parachute. <laughs> I don't even want to talk to you. I feel like if I distract you, something bad's gonna happen, so I'm just gonna watch. <laughs> That's why he's watching very intently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still don't like I'm not still like how many times do you jump? All to like pack myself. This is like I'm like learning. How many jumps do you have? I have like hundred and forty, kind of. Gotcha, kind of. He's just lazy and pays other people to do it. Yeah. I've been to the skydive places and I've watched the like twelve-year-olds pack shoots. H hence the reason why I don't jump out of planes. <laughs> I'm good on that. Things like I always pay like them to like pack my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I don't know how this shit. Is. <laughs> Are you trying to get a donkey in the helicopter? Yeah, I did. Oh, uh, you got one in there? Yeah. Are we gonna get a shoot for him? Yeah. The guy told me I could fly it. We'll get up in there. Well, you know, you you know what happens when I get on those excavators. Okay, guys. stay way far away from it then. Don't even touch it. Now while Papa Rano's back there trying to con his way into flying the helicopter, and uh, the crew's over there packing their shoots. We go back and check on Aaron and them getting some actual work done over here. Kind of random stuff that happens out here at the ranch, you know? So one of the things I wanted when I got this place was I wanted it just to be like, not so much a free for all, but to be like just this cool place where we can just, like we can do that. Couldn't do that at my old house. Couldn't land a helicopter at my old house. And it's funny, we ever do a, a segment with Mama Rhino on the old YouTubes here. She'll tell you that when I was a kid, I always said, at some point in my life, I'm gonna have a helicopter, helicopter landing pad, or something of the like. That was before six years ago when I got struck with like anxiety and a fear of flying that I never had. But what's funny is when we were doing the pours down here, I'm like, man, one of these days I'm gonna throw a couple extra yards in one of these trucks or order a couple extra yards and I'm gonna pour a helicopter landing pad. Didn't think we'd really ever have a helicopter coming out here and hanging out, but we probably should have poured that landing pad. Well, now guys, you're starting to see like the scale and size of the entrance here. Obviously, remember, we're bringing the grade up, so these buildings aren't gonna be as tall as they look right now. They're gonna be about eight foot out of the ground, but we gotta put them in the ground first. So we, uh, that line right there is gonna be where concrete is. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. And then that should get us to about our eight foot height on this end. This column over here, we're starting to look real Jurassic Parky. I, I thought about when we started doing this, putting like 16 foot high columns with these giant massive gates, but kind of opted against that and to go a little bit more subtle. But again, this grade's gonna get brought up two you can see our finished floor marks right here so that's where we'll be which is going to bring this column down to again eight feet up out of the ground at that point if the neighbors didn't think uh drug dealer at this point from the entrance uh, the helicopter landing here is probably going to solidify the fact that they're going to be asking a lot of questions i said let's do a drug dealer entrance this is turning out to be quite the drug dealer entrance we'll go inside the guard checker right now get a little feel for it and again remember our floor is going to be right there. We'll have a nice good view out this window. See anybody pulling up. This one's just going to be a non-opening window. This side, we'll do a window that you can slide open. That way we get some cross ventilation between that and the door. And a lot of people are saying you need a window on this side, the door on the back side. Keep in mind, like, if, if we were ever to do something that uh, involved, like, actually needing a guard and, like, checking people, every guard shack I've ever seen, the guard walks out to your car. You're not going to be able to get close enough with your car here to uh, like reach through the window. I mean, maybe you could, but having them step out is the way to go. Where are you oh, from? From Chile. Chile? Yeah. Oh, okay. Raul Gardlicic. Uh Is that kind of hard? Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Raul and G A R D I L C I C. Standing right next to him, and I barely got that. So hopefully you guys got that. So he's the the FEV drone pilot for today, and obviously he's gonna be flying this month. This, this big old setup here. Yeah, it's a phone, so it's like sketch good luck <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna do a test fly there you go meanwhile the jumpers are over here getting ready getting loaded up or doing some i don't know some video stuff oh i guess we're learning how to jump out of a helicopter today not to be game time that so she's never jumped out of a helicopter she's, really fast. she's done balloons and planes a little out stupid never a helicopter you everyone always gets sketched out about it but it's uh, it's probably that <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like it's cooler because like you're not does he hover when you guys jump? Uh, yeah, he'll just sit there hover. Okay. And he'll bail out. And like, most people get creeped out about balloons because you can't hear anything. Yeah, gotcha. it's just like you hear a little bit of wind and like a creaky basket. Yeah. And like that's it. I don't like it too tight. With this, like, I don't know if you fall off a little bit early, your skydive just starts early. So it's fair. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> oh, he got it working. Wow, I can't believe that thing can hold. It looks very sluggish with that weight. Oh, he's got it. Good afternoon, San Diego. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, we are about to do a helicopter jump down here. And um, I was curious if we could get uh, above 
5,000 feet, like 8,000 feet, which would be your space. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I called last night, and uh, they just told me, don't bother anything, just call back today and I'll tell you right. Call back today. <laughs> oh, they're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Very adorable. Okay. There's no supervisor in tonight. Okay. Uh, we're departing from a uh, ranch uh, at that location, and we'll be off the ground uh, here in... 30 minutes. And call sign, please, which you're using. November, uh, we aren't using a call sign unless you want us to. We'll use one. That'd be kind of cool. Can we use one? <laughs> you can use any call sign you like. I just need to know what you're going to call yourself once you get airborne. What do you want to call yourself? I know you always think about this and you never have a chance. You're on it. You're on it. Uh, we'll, just be, we'll just be jump seven. Operation, Operation Rhino? Jump seven. <laughs> jump seven? Yeah. Okay, so jump seven. Um, Bravo Zero Six is your type helo. Can we be Darth and Vader Seven? <laughs> okay, okay. So we're Darth Vader Seven will be off the ranch. <laughs> okay, and you're looking for eight thousand feet. All right, we'll make it happen. Um, that was easy. <laughs> you can call yourself any of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Should have told me that last night. I would have thought about it. All right. <laughs> all right, Wade. Whole jump was hindering on these bad boys right here. Yeah. We can power the uh, helicopter now. That'll get us enough. That's all we <laughs> That's need. All we need. That's all we need. <laughs> Three volts right there. There you go. All right, you need to move. You can't afford to to buy this. You gotta go. You gotta go. Wait, are you flying? Or are you jumping out? He's gonna abandon ship up in the just air. Just in one. case. I like that. <laughs> all right, Wade has abandoned shoot. I'm gonna shoot. He's just going for it. Just gotta trust him sometimes. How much bigger are the tandem shoots? Like school buses, really? Yeah. At least twice. Oh, all right. Sweet. Game time. Good luck, y'all. Figure this out. <laughs> all right, they're firing up the helicopter. So, good thing sounds gnarly. Been here for three hours. Three hour prep time. They're gonna do two jumps again. They're doing promo shoot for that camera phone thing. I have come to learn a lot from skydiving today, and I know today might be like a really random day, but a lot of this stuff is like stuff I never get to see. It's probably stuff that you guys never get to see. So I'm just sitting back and watching and learning that skydiving is a whole lot of like, is that tight? Yeah. Hey, you get your lines done right? Yeah. Not for me, guys. It is not for me. Okay, take two. Well, and Pablo Rano is still trying to fly the helicopter. The drone is hot. This yeah. is getting like, shut it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Take two. I don't know if it's a good sign or a bad sign. We're gonna go with good sign.
out of a helicopter? Yeah! Congratulations! <laughs> Good Thank stuff, you. guys. Good stuff. It was nice that we got cleared by the airspace yeah. to get up higher. We had a lot of time. It was like, ran out of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of smoke grenades didn't go off or smoke bombs or whatever they are. So we'll uh, let's see what they look like on the ground here. There we go. Is. Wade flies a helicopter. He's a photographer. He does it all. Dismantles the explosive devices. <laughs> Got my amateur explosive license. There you go. <laughs> they look a lot bigger from the ground. Yeah. This thing's rad. Oh, so you can pull the stick out of this side? Yeah, you take everything out when you got other people over here. They'll have people over here don't know what they're doing. They'll be touching shit. Yep. And they don't even know what they're touching. They're just doing it because they're nervous. Yeah. So they're like holding on to something. They're just holding on to something that actually controls the helicopter. And you're like, don't touch that. Pedals, they change the um, angle or the pitch of that tail rotor. Gotcha. That's what drives it left and right. Okay. So you can take it to a flat pitch and the torque of the helicopter will actually send you like a top, you'll just start spinning. Gotcha. So you start to add a little pitch, so it's pulling itself, so it's overcoming that Okay. That force that it wants to just pull it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you didn't have the tail rotor, the body of the helicopter would just spin in the opposite direction of the blades. These are more engine, engine oil, it's transmission oil, temperature and pressure. So when I'm hearing it, I clearly see a button that says engine igniter, and it straight up sounds like you're igniting like your propane stove. <laughs> like, yeah, is it similar? Is. That's all it is. Yeah? Yeah, you're just, you're, uh, so you start spinning the thing, you get the air going through there. Right. You gotta have enough air going through there, otherwise when you hit that igniter, Imagine just dumping a bunch of fuel in your, your yeah. grill or whatever's got an igniter on it, dumping a bunch of fuel in your grill, Yeah. and you don't have any airflow through there. You just got a bunch of fuel sitting there, and then you hit that igniter, what's going to happen? It's just going to blow, blow up. Yeah, we don't want that. So instead of that, what you'll get, you get that uh, engine turning fast enough that you get airflow through there. Gotcha. And then once I get it up to about, this is my um, RPMs, Okay. but it's in a percentage. They don't really tell you how much you're doing. You're just doing 100%. Okay. And 100% is about 30,000 RPMs. Jeez. Roughly. So you get it going with the battery. That's what you hear it. The battery's pushing that thing. That's what's that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get it going about 15% RPM. And then you can introduce fuel. And at the same time you introduce fuel, it's got, it goes through its own little cycle. It's got a, it's not very smart, but it's got a brain that introduces the fuel at a certain point and the igniters at a certain point. Well, you introduce the fuel, but it introduces the igniters for you on this one. Gotcha. Then you just watch it and you're watching that thing and you're, you're just, eyes are glued right there on that temperature. Okay. If it's not spinning fast enough, that temperature's just gonna rock it up. And at that point, you just cut that fuel off as quick as you can. Otherwise, you'll just torch everything back there. Oof. Speaking of, what's a uh, fuel cost for one of these bad boys now? It's not bad. It's 25 gallons an hour is what I'm burning. And what are the, what, is, what do you run? Avgas or? Uh, jet fuel. Jet fuel? What's that run? Oh, I think I paid $3.80 yesterday per gallon over in French Valley. That's cheaper than diesel. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm, I'm converting my truck over to jet fuel. <laughs> Jeez. And that's all jet fuel is, is kerosene. Okay. You can run a jet engine though. You can run a jet engine on almost anything. Like it'll run on hundred load lead or it'll run on car gas so, cause, cause of the heat and how it, the operating principle. Anything just combusts in it? Yeah, you could put Jack Daniels in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, I like it. That's Economical as far as fuel goes, your, your cost comes in when you start talking about these blades are good for 5,000 hours. Right. And this today we're gonna Burn, like that'll be three hours. So yeah. amortize the cost of one of these blades across 5,000 hours. Right. And you do that for every piece of the helicopter. Oh, we got USB ports? Oh yeah. Jeez. We got Where's the speakers? They're through the headset. They're, okay, okay. Yeah, we're, cram we're cranking to Kygo or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so those are just all your circuit breakers. Yeah, okay. So for every piece of equipment you're running electrical, you got a breaker up there for it. Gotcha. That way if you got something kind of acting a little wonky, yeah. you can isolate it. Get down here to see what it is. Yeah, yeah. Good Lord. When you go through training on one of those, they send you through training for about, I think it's a two week course. Yeah. And by the end of the two week course, you can like reach up and you just know where it is without even looking. Nice. Final right. next toy. Yeah. What, well, you getting in? Well, he, he's gonna let me fly it. He, he ain't gonna let you fly it. Yeah, if he's smart, he won't let you even touch it. We'll go We've seen the excavator or James the skid steer. <laughs> we don't need none of that. 
That's really big. And then it's got this little extender. Usually they're flat back here, but you can buy this piece of plastic for a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you, a, gives you another eight inches, so you can just set golf clubs in there. All that motor's down in here, and Ooh. what? It's nothing. That's it right there. The gray part. So this right here is actually your gearbox. The gray part's your gearbox. That's not the motor. Where's the motor? The motor starts right about there. See these bolts? Yeah. Your motor is bolted right here. Here's your uh, here's your can, your fuel coming in. You see these fuel lines running up there? Yeah. So your fuel's introduced there and atomized. And then after it's atomized, those igniters hit it. Once you get this thing started, you can turn those igniters off. It's self-sustaining. It lights it, it goes through those turbine wheels and drives the compressor wheels. And it goes around here, it's coming out here, and then it goes back here and then out the out the exhaust stacks, you got one on each side. Gotcha. And then all your intake is coming up through here. Okay. And then pushing back through this little area right here. The blue here. part? Yeah. And then there's one bolt up top there that's holding that fucking thing on, and they <laughs> call it the Jesus bolt. That's it. That's it. There's a bolt up there. <laughs> and that shaft don't even look that damn big. They're not that big. Everything in this, they design it to be lightweight. So this area right here? Yeah. That's all fuel tank. Gotcha. That's the only fuel tank. Yeah, so right. It goes from about here to here. It's this L-shaped thing, and that holds 100 gallons. This thing doesn't weigh anything. That's crazy, what like? <laughs> I mean, just look at the size of the hardware that's spinning at, what, 20,000 RPMs? This doesn't spin at 20. Okay. This is spinning. They usually try to spin these things so that, because if you hit supersonic on your tip, because the inside of this is going slower than the outside, right? Right. So from this to get from here to here, how far did my hand just travel here versus my hand here? Right. So this has to go a lot faster. And the same thing for the main rotors. Imagine with that moment, the outside of the rotor is turning way faster than the inside of the rotor. Yeah. So that's why the inside of these rotors is that big fat, you'll see it, it's a lot fatter. Yeah. It's a low speed wing. Whereas the tip of the rotor, you see that real thin profile, that's a high speed wing. That's going a lot quicker. They don't need to give as much uh, surface area. Yeah. You jumping shirtless? I did it wrong last time. Oh, yeah, he's gonna put on a shirt. <laughs> now for this jump, they're gonna hang off the skids on the bottom of the helicopter. So back in my three gun days, the liquid grip. This was the good stuff right here. Oh, oh, focus, focus. Basically like putting chalk in your hands, but it's like liquid. It dries on there and it doesn't leave chalk residue on everything. That's good stuff right there. Oh wow. Oh wow. Uh, where's my shirt? Is it good? I don't think I have a shirt. You don't have a shirt? <laughs> no, I, I always go shirtless everywhere. Did you show up with a shirt? <laughs> Oh wow! Hi. <laughs> oh, we're sticking to the. Hey, I have super. Skin. This one's good for the shop. Oh yeah, there you That's go. Good stuff. You and I. Wait, I'm in the first one on the second one. You're gonna be. We're all getting out. Oh, the second one. The second one. demo, yeah. And then you and I reach down and start our smoke flares, and then lean back up so we all see. So I know that your smoke flare works, and then what we'll do from there is just climb down. So and I come on the inside with you, right? Go like you're kind of straddling that. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Next time I got I got this. I learned. Yeah. yeah. I got yeah. you guys next time. Yeah, I'll, I'll get up there. Look at Melissa's sweet shirt though. I got you explaining that whole Boom. time. <laughs> you gotta have a proof. Well, not yet. You got a skydive <laughs> certified shirts right now. Oh yeah. Now you just pull. I'm taking this up to six thousand feet. There you go. So all the prep is done. They're ready for flight number two. A good bit upwind this time. We got just a little bit dusted out last time. You guys ever look at a, like a cut off disc when you're grinding or cutting something on a grinder? This feels just like that. Look at the rotors, like right at high level with you right now.
Listen, you want to fly me at that altitude? All day. Way up there? Not so much. So I got a little distracted today by the whole helicopter skydiving thing. Let me give you guys like a little end of the date after here. Obviously, we all got a little distracted, but column, columns. These columns are done. I think this one's done height wise. We still got to bring that column up a couple more courses and then we're going to infill this. This center wall right here is going to be two courses down from the top there. So it's going to have a little height variance and keep the columns looking taller. Um, again, once we bring the dirt up, these things aren't going to be as massive as they look right now, even though I kind of like them this big. Um, so finish that column, finish this column. Uh, Papa Rhino will jump in here and do that in the next day or so. But I'm stoked, stoked with the progress. I know this was like a super, super random video, but it's not every day that you get to hang out with a helicopter pilot, skydivers and all that stuff at your own property. So I think we're making good on using this place to its fullest potential. I gotta give a huge thank you to Wade, Raul, Melissa, Justice, the whole crew that came out, super, super rad people. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna be super pissed at me for not getting up in that helicopter, but that ain't for me guys, that is, nope not happening so as always thank you guys so much for watching if you have not subscribed already please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content don't forget to give this video a like aka a thumbs up don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life you gotta be willing to work for it you guys are the best i'm out damn uh. yeah uh. yeah